Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, I told you that taxes are a way to alter your behavior. What I want to talk about today is what we have to look going forward and how the people behind the curtain, if you want to call it that, uh, are pulling the strings in ways that we really aren't looking at too much because of the things that the mainstream media is throwing at us on a daily basis. All right. So if, if you would look back and take a look at the mainstream media for the last week or two, or ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, you will look back that they're not talking about some other things as much as they used to. Before Russia started to do what they're doing, all you ever heard on the mainstream media was the health crisis. Right? And the reason I say that is because I don't watch the mainstream media, but I watch other channels that comment on what the mainstream media is doing. Right? So, but all you heard, or, or, or also in the form of articles that you see on whatever website that you get your news from, all you ever hear is mainstream media saying, saying stuff about the health crisis. Right? Now, I don't see it very much or very often at all. I can go to my news channels that I look at on a daily basis, and I almost don't see even one article every day where now everything you hear about is Ukraine and Russia, right? But what are they doing in the backgrounds? Now, I'm not here to say that what I'm going to show you now is not the only thing they're doing in the background, but we all know that they have an agenda. We all know that the powers that be have an agenda, and what is that? It's to control us 100%. And one of the ways that they control us, ladies and gentlemen, is through taxation. Think about it. When you are taxed for doing A, B, or C, your behavior is altered. So, for example, let's say, remember in Pennsylvania, I think it was, or in Philadelphia, they, they passed a soda pop tax. I think this was like two or three years ago. They passed a tax on soda pop beverages. I think it was like 100% tax or something like that to where if you went to buy a two liter bottle of soda, whatever it was, and it was normally $2, you're not paying $4 for it. So how did they alter the behavior of the people that lived there? What they did was is those people, instead of going to the stores or supermarkets right there to buy those uh, soda products, they went across the border and they bought them there. So they altered their behavior. Now that was an unintended consequence. They didn't think about that before they passed that tax. But what did it do? It made them change their behavior. Instead of shopping here, they went and shopped there. And it ended up being really bad for the grocers, supermarkets, mom and pop shops in that area because a lot of people left and didn't do business there. Not because it was the owner's faults, but because of the policies that the owners had to abide by. Right, so a, a taxation is a way that they can alter your behavior. So, for example, if they want you to drive less, what can they do? They can tax gasoline at 100%. How many people here would drive more or less if they put a gasoline tax of 100%? I would say that most people would drive less. Actually, Mrs. Alaska Prepper just found a little beater with a heater that we're going to probably purchase this week. I'm going to have my mechanic look at it because it's a little 1.6 liter uh, four-cylinder or something like that. That gives like almost 40 miles to the gallon. And I was like, you know what? We would probably get our money back for what we're paying for that in like a year and a half when compared to how much we have to use gas on our regular vehicles. I love the vehicles that we have, but there's a lot of times where we're just driving by ourselves. So if she's going to town for something by herself, it makes sense. So my return on investment on that is probably going to come back pretty quick. But that is a way of my behavior being altered, all right, by raising the, the tax on gasoline. And it is a tax, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Inflation is a tax. So because we see gasoline prices going up, that is a tax that we're paying. Why is that? Because the gasoline that you're buying today for whatever it is, it still has the same BTU in it that it did two years ago or five years ago. It hasn't changed. It is the same product. And yes, some of it has to do with what's going on with Ukraine and Russia. That I understand. But a lot of it has to do with policy. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the inflation of the price of gasoline has altered my behavior into purchasing a smaller vehicle that I can use whenever my family is not involved in my travels. In my opinion, my return on investment on that on that will come back quickly because the inflation of the gasoline has gone up so high and I believe that it will stay high and go even higher and that's what I want to talk about you today I'm gonna to go ahead and share something with you here so right here it says pr gasoline prices under the Green New Deal would reach $13 per gallon all right now ladies and gentlemen take the name Green New Deal out of it that is a word that when people hear that word they get emotional about it either one way or another I don't care I don't care what the name of this bill is. I don't care, all right? What I care about is, is what is it going to do to our nation? What is it going to do to our people? All right, what is it going to do to our economy? All right, that's what I care about. I could care less the name of it, and I could care less what administration is passing it. All I care about is, is how is it going to affect you and me? How is it going to affect us? And as you can see, I've highlighted some things here because there are some things that I want to go ahead and talk about. So it says here, the Green New Deal would require a $10 increase on a single gallon of gas, according to a study by the CO2 Coalition. Key to the Green New Deal is the goal of eliminating gasoline-powered vehicles in favor of electric vehicles. But in order to make electric cars desirable to consumers, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, I told you that taxes are a way to alter your behavior. In order to make electric cars desirable to consumers, gasoline prices would have to increase to $13 per gallon. Such a tax would undoubtedly harm consumers and the U.S. economy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they already know that that would harm our, our economy greatly. And they would know that that would harm every working American in the United States. And why is that? Can you imagine gasoline at $13? How much do you think you're really going to pay for everything that you consume besides gasoline? Gasoline is the last thing I would worry about. If gasoline ever went up to $13 a gallon, that's the last thing I would worry about. But what about all of those other things that you need? Remember, everything that you consume is energy. So they already know this. And right now, we are seeing this happen before our eyes. And they're blaming it on, what, on whatever they can find that is convenient for them to blame it on. I think I talked about this on uh, Friday's live stream. I showed you where Janet Yellen, who's the Treasury uh, of uh, the Secretary of Treasury, or the Treasury Secretary, I showed you where here back in November of last year, she was blaming all of this inflation on the health crisis and all of a sudden now just a few days ago she's blaming all of this inflation on Ukraine and Russia whatever it is that they can blame it on that is convenient for them that they can use to to divert blame so that the public doesn't see what's really going on that's what they're gonna blame it on and as you can see we are halfway there ladies and gentlemen I saw some gas I saw some gas prices, I'm pretty sure they were in California, that were over $8 for premium. And I think it was like $7.49 for regular unleaded gasoline. So this, ladies and gentlemen, will affect us a heck of a lot more than the Russia-Ukraine. But nobody's talking about this. No one is. Why? Because they're trying to pass all of these bills or parts of bills, you know, uh, hidden in other bills that they're trying to pass that have 2,000. You know, if a bill has 2,000 pages, everyone did not read that. So they take a little snippet from a bill that didn't pass and they throw it in there. And by the time that you know it, 100, 100 bills later that have been passed into law, they've already got the other one that, that couldn't pass on its own. That's how it works, ladies and gentlemen. We have, we have no representation, okay? If you think you have representation, then you need to wake up and you need to do a little bit of research. We have no representation. Right now, if you took a poll on how many Americans really think that we should have any involvement with Russia, Ukraine, I think it was like 74% of Americans said, we don't want any involvement with Russia and Ukraine, going, what's going on over there. Do we have any involvement in it? Absolutely. Why? Because it doesn't matter what we think. 
Okay, now here it says the CO2 coalition study uh, and, uh, entitled, I'm sorry I'm moving around because the sun is on there, The Social Cost of Carbon and Carbon Taxes. That's the title of it, right? And they state, level of carbon taxes needed to encourage a change in technology. So you see, I just want to point out to you that these increases in gas and these increases in everything is not why you think. They need the money from somewhere. And governments can only get money from what? From you and me. They need the money from somewhere. So they use the money that we earn to do things or to enable them to do things that will further hinder our liberties. Isn't that something, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> the cost of... <laughs> this is the part right here that I think is the most important. The cost of transitioning to electric vehicles. There's just one thing. The authors of the study find that a carbon tax of about $1,000 per metric ton of carbon dioxide, or roughly $10 per gallon of gasoline, would be needed for electric cars to compete with conventional uh, internal combustion engine vehicles based on the full cost of ownership and operation of the vehicle. They estimate that driving an electric vehicle or maintaining an electric vehicle for one year cost about $2,700 more than what it costs to drive a regular internal combustion engine vehicle. So how are they going to manipulate the people or um, uh, have the people choose for themselves that they want to go to an electric vehicle? They're going to make the cost of driving a regular vehicle so much that it'll be more than what it costs to drive an electric vehicle Then people will switch over voluntarily. You know, without really knowing that it's not voluntarily, that they're switching over because they can no longer afford to do A. So now they have to do the next best thing, which is B. A $10 carbon tax on gasoline added to today's gasoline price of about $3, well, this was written a while back, uh, would make gasoline cost about $13 per gallon at the pump. And ladies and gentlemen, remember what I said in the beginning of this. I said, this is what they're doing right now. Who here really thinks that gasoline prices are going to go back down greatly? All right, uh, I believe that gasoline prices will find a floor. You know, after all of this inflation is over, because it's not done being over, it's going to last for years. But the gasoline prices will find a floor, meaning a price that they will never come back under. For example, do you all remember when gasoline was less than a dollar a gallon? This was 20, 25 years ago maybe even 30 years ago it was less than a dollar a gallon you get it for 89 cents 99 cents and then eventually there came a time where gasoline was like dollar fifty a dollar sixty but never ever ever again did it ever go under a dollar never again and then there came a time where it was a buck fifty and then it went above a buck fifty and but never again did you see it again under a buck fifty it's the same thing that's going to happen with this we're going to get to a certain point to where we're going to be paying eight, nine, ten dollars a gallon, and then it'll come back down to seven, eight dollars a gallon. But never again will be will we see it under seven dollars a gallon. It's going to find a floor, and that is the frog in boiling water. That is how they use the frog in boiling water on us, because once it gets to eight or nine or ten dollars a gallon, it's going to come back down, and people are going to be like, oh, thank goodness, gasoline came down $2 a gallon in the last three months. Isn't that awesome? But here we are paying $8 a gallon for it. And now we're satisfied paying $8 a gallon for it because we were paying 10 bucks a gallon for it for the last year or two. right? And then that will be the new floor. And then some other crisis, some other boogeyman will come, will come around, and it'll go up to $10, $15 a gallon. And then we'll find a floor at 10 gallons. That is the frog in boiling water, ladies and gentlemen. It is a slow process, takes a long time. But this is what they're doing, and it's what they've been doing for a while now. We're not going to be here in a 100 years to see if the 0 0.01 uh, increase in, in, in temperature or whatever that they're predicting in the next 100 years will affect us. We're not, ladies and gentlemen. We won't be here. But what is this going to do to you today? And, and in all reality, you know, I'm not trying to go on a rant here, but anyways, in all reality, look back 30 years, all right? I'm going to bring up a name that I really don't like to mention very often, all right? But the name is Al Gore. I remember 
when I was very young, 20, 30 years ago, you know, just when I got married, I remember, I remember listening to this guy talking about all of these things that were going to happen by the year 2000, by the year 2012, by the year 2020. None of those things have happened. Not one. But he's a billionaire now. He's a billionaire. It's all about money. And those people that say money is not everything, your time is money. Your time is money. So it is. It's not that you have to love this. This is not money. All right? It's not that you have to love this, but you have to understand that your time is money. It is something that is tangible. The Green New Deal would cripple the U.S. economy by requiring carbon taxes ranging from $200 to $1,000 per metric ton to spur replacement of current technologies in the transportation and electric generating sectors. In the United States, if the United States were to implement carbon taxes of this nature, Americans would be devastated financially. And given that the United States emits about 15% of global carbon dioxide emissions compared to China's, who emits 28%, uh, the U.S. reductions would have little impact on global atmospheric concentration. And that's another thing that they don't tell you on the mainstream media. The United States, for the past several years, has been the best country at actually reducing. I don't agree with this carbon stuff. I don't agree with it. That's fine if you do. We can agree to disagree and still be friends, for real. Right? I don't agree with it, all right? I've done a lot of research on that, too. I'm not going to get into it because it takes a long time. But I've actually done videos on that also. All right, go listen to Adapt 2030, Ice Age Farmer, Oppenheimer Ranch Project, even Suspicious Observer. Go listen to those. Those guys are extremely educated, very smart, and they have all of the data that you would need in order to, to get a good opinion on whether this carbon stuff is real or not. Here, for the last several years, the United States has been like the best country at reducing emissions, at actually creating energy that has a, a lesser of a carbon footprint because of how we do it. For example, here on the military base that's, that's uh, here a, a little bit away from me, uh, Fort Wainwright, that military base is powered by coal, right? It's powered by coal. And there is a smokestack that you can see all the time, especially in the winter. But that smokestack does not emit any carbon at all. Why? Because they took that and they put something in there that's called a scrubber. Right, because I got a tour of that place once when I was still in the military. They put something in there that's called a scrubber, and it scrubs all of the carbon out of the air before it actually exits the smokestack. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we have the technology to actually use these biofuels. We have the technology, but the technology that we have now is already in place. It wouldn't require the government taking more of your labor. So now they have a boogeyman. They will have a boogeyman forever, right? They'll have a boogeyman forever that will that will um, uh, allow them to create policies that will literally encroach on your liberties year after year after year after year, and most people will ask for it. Why? Because they don't have the time, and I don't blame a lot of the people. They don't have the time. I just said that people in America, 65%, I think, they live paycheck to paycheck. Do, they, do you think that they have the time that I have to sit here for four, six, eight hours researching one topic when there's hundreds of topics going on that are a lot more important to their life right there and then because they're trying to figure out how the heck am I going to feed my kids tomorrow? They don't have the time. It is the system that has been developed for us to keep us so busy, to keep us so worried about what's going on that all of this stuff happens in the background and there's nothing that we do about it and by the time that we know about it it's too late and, and getting back to china china is like one of the biggest polluters in the world but you never hear anyone talk about that you never hear the mainstream media you never hear that girl i forget her name that girl that uh that took a boat you know across the pond whatever you never hear about that girl talking bad about china about them being the worst polluters you never hear them talking about india India is a pretty bad polluter. You never hear them talking about the militaries of the world who do a whole bunch of pollution as well. You just hear them talk about the topics that would encourage policies to be passed 
at the behest of us, the citizens. And they finish here saying that most Americans would find $13 per gallon gasoline unacceptable. The impacts on households and businesses of all kinds would be enormous. I had to do a little math and I just wanted to show you really quick how it is that this affects you directly. If you are a working person, if you are a wage earner, if you earn a salary, if you are on social security, a fixed income, a pension, it affects you. Now, if you're a billionaire, right? If you're a multimillionaire who owns most of your wealth and assets, it doesn't really affect you. But I would I would assume that 99.9% .9 of the people that are here now, by the way, thank you very much for being here. I know we had a few more viewers come in. Uh, so I, I would bet that about 99% of you out there that are listening to this right now are a working class, are a wage earner, are a salary earner. This is how it affects you and it steals from you your labor. So if you've ever taken a minute to just listen, to listen well to what someone is saying, please take that minute now. Because what I'm going to tell you right now is exactly how they steal your labor. I've done this before, but I've broken it down now so that you can really see how it is that inflation literally strips you of your time and your labor and your purchasing power. So I went ahead and took a look. If you take, at the, uh, if you take a look up, up there, let me see, up there, <laughs> uh, upper left-hand corner, it says year average price. So the year 2022 where we're at now, the average price for a gasoline is about $3.59. This is a few days old, okay? And then I went down to 2015. I just figured I'd go down to, to uh, you know, five, six, seven years so that we can compare, you know, a few years back to today, all right, as far as inflation goes. In 2015, you'll see that the average price of one gallon of gas was about $2.45, okay? But this is what I want you to take a look at. In 2015, the average wage in the U.S., the mean wage, meaning that they took what the highest people were making and then they took what the lowest people were making and they found the average in 50%. The mean wage was $53,600, all right? Now, if you take a look at the calculator that you see there, if you look at the very top line, it says $53,600 divided by the amount of gasoline back in 2015, which was $2.45. So when you take $53,600 and you divide it by the price of gasoline in that same year, you come up with 21,877 gallons. That means that for one year's wages in 2015, the average wage earner could purchase 21,877 gallons of gasoline. Very simple, right? So this is a year's worth of work. This is what that year's worth of work got you in gasoline. All right, now let's fast forward to 2022. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is 2022. So in 2022, so far, the mean wage for 2022 or the median pay is $64,943. Some people would say, wow, that's really good. In 2015, our wage was $53,600. And now it's $64,900. I mean, that's more than $10,000, right? That's great. That's what, $11,000 or so? You know, that's great. But, and this doesn't just work with gasoline. It works with food. It works with cars. It works with houses. It works with everything that you buy, ladies and gentlemen, all right? So now if you take 2022's number of 64,943 and you divide it by today's average price for a gallon of gasoline, which I know it's a little bit higher than that right now, I think, of $3.59. Look at how many gallons of gasoline you can buy with one year's wage today compared to how many gallons of gasoline you can buy with one year's wages of 2021, I mean of 2015. In 2015, one year's wages would buy you 21,877 gallons of gasoline. Today, the average one-year wage in the United States of America will buy you 18,089 gallons of gasoline. Ladies and gentlemen, that means that you are paying more of your time to buy that gasoline. Because if you wanted to buy the equivalent amount of gasoline today that you did back in 2015, you would have to work probably an additional 20%. You would have to work. That is how your labor and your time is stolen from you through the power of inflation.
That is how, ladies and gentlemen. And through the power of taxation. Right? Taxation and inflation is the same thing. Price is going up. All right? That is how your labor is stolen from you. So do you think it's going to get better? That's the question. Do you think it's going to get better than what it is now? And if you think it's going to get better, then plan accordingly. Prep accordingly. Personally, I don't think it's going to get better. As an individual, there's not too much you can do. Right? But as we the people, we have all the power. We hold the power. We just don't know it in mass. Most Americans don't know. Most people around the world don't know. They don't understand that collectively they hold the power, but they don't understand it. Why? Because the governments and the media and Hollywood and all these other places, they do a great job at keeping us divided. That's why. And that's why I say that it's going to get worse. Because the division, not only in our country here in the United States, but the division around the world is so great, they have done a great job at keeping us divided. And our division is so great that it's going to take a crisis of magnitudes higher than what we've gone through for the last couple of years and are going through now for the people to finally realize who the real enemy is.